I'm here to tell you about one of the most amazing cowboys of all time. His name is Pecos Bill. There aren't many cowboys these days. Not real ones like Pecos Bill. He was the dog gonest, gall darnest, dad blainest, son of a prairie side that ever rode across this great United States of America. And a cow puncher worth a lick will tell you if it weren't for Bill, there wouldn't have been a wild west. It would have been plain old mundane. And who wants to hear stories about the great mundane west? Well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, sliding down the hill without really knowing where the cactus are. Cause to understand what Bill was about, you gotta know he was half coyote. Pecos Bill had one of the strangest childhoods a boy ever had. It all started after his father decided there was no longer enough room in East Texas for his family. Pack up, Ma, he cried. Neighbors moving within 200 miles. It's getting too crowded. So they loaded up a wagon with all their things. Now some say they had 15 children, while others say 18. However many there were, the children were as loud as thunder. And as they set off across the wild country, their mother and father could hardly hear a thing. They traveled in that wagon for two weeks until the wagon hit a big rock and, quite by accident, little Bill squirted out the back. Bill's parents didn't know he was gone till they took head count three weeks later. By that time, they decided to chalk up the loss of their youngest to experience and didn't bother backtracking to find the little devil. So, there was poor Bill, a mere baby, all alone on the ridge. His parents and his brothers and sisters were gone forever. Pago Bill's prospects looked mighty slim. He was lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. Luckily, first critter to happen upon Bill was a coyote. Like all coyotes, this one had a soft spot for youngins. So she took him back to the den, where Bill grew up like any coyote, and a darn good coyote too. He did all the things coyotes did, like chase lizards and howl at the moon. Hawoo! Now, Bill spent 17 years living like a coyote until one day a cowboy rode up on his horse. He took one look at Bill and asked, what are you? Bill was not used to human language, but finally said, farm it. That's a word to use for any type of wild animal. No, you weren't, said the cowboy. Yes, I am, said Bill. I have fleas. Lots of people have fleas, said the cowboy. You don't have a tail. Yes, I do, said Bill. Show it to me then, the cowboy said. Bill looked at his backside and realized he did not have a tail like the other coyotes. Well, what am I then? Bill asked. You're a cowboy, so start acting like one, the cowboy cried out. Well, that was all Bill needed to hear. He said goodbye to his coyote friends and left to join the world of humans. Pecos Bill was a good cowboy, but he still hungered for adventure. On one particular day, Bill made a rattlesnake 50 feet long. The snake made a hissing noise and was not about to let Bill pass. But after a tense minute, Bill beat the snake until it surrendered. He felt sorry for the varmint, though, and made him a traveling companion. Later the same day, Bill came across an angry mountain lion. There was a huge battle, but Bill took control of that big cat and put a saddle on it. He rode that mountain lion all the way to West Texas, where he created the biggest ranch in all the land. You see, Big Goose Bill invented the art of being a cowboy. He invented the skill of throwing a special rope called a lasso over a cow's head to catch wandering cattle. And some say he used a rattlesnake as his lasso. Pecos Bill could ride anything that ever was. You see, the West was suffering from the worst drought ever seen. It was so dry that the horses and cows started to dry up and blow away in the wind. Then came a windstorm bigger than any other, and a huge tornado kicked across the land like a wild bronco. Bill jumped on that tornado and rode across Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, all the time squeezing rain out of it to save the land from drought. Bill also had a horse named Widowmaker. He got that name because any man who rode that horse would be thrown off and killed, and his wife would become a widow. No one cried that horse but Bill. Then came the day when Bill met his bride, Slewfoot Sue, a wild red-haired woman, riding a giant catfish down the Rio Grande River. They fell in love with each other at first sight. 
On their wedding day, Bill dressed in his best buckskin suit, and Sue wore a beautiful white dress with a huge steel spring bustle in the back. That's the type of big dress that many women wore in those days, bigger the better. Now, after the marriage ceremony, Slewfoot Sue had a really bad idea. She decided she wanted to ride Widowmaker. Bill begged her not to try, but she had a mind made up. Second she jumped on that horse's back, he began to buck like nothing anyone had ever seen. He sent Sue flying so high she sailed clear over the moon and landed back to earth, landing on that, on that steel spring bustle that bounced her high up as before. She would keep bouncing forever if nothing was done. And when Bill saw Sue was in trouble, he took his rope out, though some say it was a rattlesnake, and lassoed Sue to bring her down to earth. Only, she just bounced Bill back up with her. Somehow the two came to rest on the moon, and that's where they stayed. Some say they raised a family up there. Their children were as loud and wild as Bill and Sue were in their younger days. Some say the sound of thunder that carries over the dry land around the Pecos River is nothing more than Pecos Bill's family laughing up a storm.